Well, the whistleblowing website WikiLeaks shaking things up again. The website has started a Syria files section. They began publishing what they say are over two million emails from the Syrian government, rebels, and companies they do business with that do business with Syria. So far, they've released dozens of files, and they plan to keep releasing them over the next two months. Now, the site's founder, Julian Assange, says he hopes the documents could shed, shed light on what's really going on inside the country, a country that has been ravaged by a brutal civil war that has left 15,000 people dead since the conflict started over a year ago. Now, to talk more about the Syrian files and the impact these documents could have is Jeslyn Raddick. She's a director of the National Security and Human Rights and Government Accountability Project. Welcome, Jeslyn. So Assange says that these documents are embarrassing for the Syrian regime, but also embarrassing for the West. I think that's accurate. I, I mean, from what we've seen so far, and again, we're talking about 2.5 million documents that span a time period of of six years. But from what we've seen so far, um, it really reveals the West and Western companies, how they say one thing and do another. For example, um, we, the, the U.S. and Europe have been severely sanctioning Syria, and yet now we're finding out from the latest cache of emails that Western companies have been assisting the Syrian government in building a radio network. You know, and I think that we do have um, we have one of those emails. It's between um, the the Italian company. It's called Fin Mechanica, uh, between their employees and Syria, uh, selling communications hardware to the country. Here it is. It says, uh, "Dear Rami, due to the current situation and changes you had to make, please disregard the original request and let us do. I think that's supposed to be one request at a time. This is going to uh, Moadamia Police Warehouse. Contact Mohammed. Allah Tamar left the company. Um, it says, please ship the following. And there you can see an order for dozens of communications equipment. So um, seems like there there is conflict of interest going on." At a minimum, conflict at in, of interest, and I mean, at, at best, it's blatant hypocrisy. Um, and at worst, I mean, they're accusing Assange and want to accuse Assange of espionage, and look what they're doing. Um, they're assisting a foreign government attempting to benefit a foreign nation that we're supposedly trying to sanction at the same time. Um, and I find all of this very interesting because it shows, number one, the WikiLeaks we, WikiLeaks is alive and well, despite the best efforts of so many countries to shut it down. And number two, that as much as the mainstream media wants to distance itself from WikiLeaks, the Syria files are the front page of every major newspaper in the world right now. Seems a little bit ironic there. Um, also wanted to point out that the U.S. is not uh, clean in this at all. Um, an American-based, it's called a First Reserve Corporation. Apparently, they own 45 percent of this come of, of Unsaldo Energy, and that is a subsidiary of Fin Mechanica, this company that has directly been dealing with the Syrian government. So it shows that the U.S. Um, is not exactly... No, they don't have clean hands in this. I mean, they've been working with the Italian company. You're exactly right. And it really points to the hypocrisy and why this is definitely in the public interest to know what these governments are doing. Syria, under the Assad regime, um, during which these emails were written, you know, experienced an uprising and then a violent, brutal repression, as you point out. Um, and meanwhile, this organization, we have Julian Assange in limbo in the Ecuadorian embassy in London, and then we have a grand jury on WikiLeaks and supposedly a grand jury um, and maybe a sealed indictment on Assange. And meanwhile, money is being choked off, off from the organization, yet still you can see how important information like this is. And now with the release of this information, we, it's, only, it's only just the beginning. Just dozens mm -hmm. have come out. They're saying over two million. Um, how could the, the release of these documents potentially affect what's happening in Syria? I mean, it's a conflict that's been dragging on for over a year now. Thousands of people ha have died. How could these documents, the release of them, affect the situation there, or, or can they? 
I think they can. I mean, I, I think the more sunlight we can bring to this, the better. Um, and having more information and transparency out there can stop us from from slapping them down with one hand and feeding them and helping the helping urge the government to hurt its own people with the other hand. Um, so I think more transparency is better, and it can actually call people out for what they're saying out of one side of their mouth and doing. And uh, speaking of transparency, I mean, this is something that WikiLeaks' Julian Assange has said that he is trying to encourage um, to kind of lift this veil of secrecy. And, uh, and, and you know, that is something that these documents do reveal, is the truth. This is These are actual communications between, um, you know, top-level government people and companies, and they do reveal the truth of what really is going on. Um, and, you know, he is criticized a lot and condemned, but in the end, isn't that the role of the media to to expose the truth? Well, that's supposed to be the media role. The media is supposed to be the government's watchdog and not its lap dog. Um, and that is supposed to be the role of the so-called fourth estate, the media. Um, and here, it's functioning as it's supposed to, evidenced by the fact that all these newspapers are rep reprinting exactly what WikiLeaks did. Yet, still, the U.S. wants to go after both Assange and WikiLeaks using the Espionage Act. And that would create a horrible precedent for, for going after journalists in the U.S. Um, under the Espionage Act. Any newspaper or publisher or, or reporter that reprints anything from these WikiLeaks documents. So I think the media needs to make a decision, the mainstream media, about whether or not WikiLeaks is valuable to them and all evidence says yes. I mean, it, it, that seems to be the evidence because we can only imagine as these leaks continue to come out that um, there's gonna be no choice but to report on, uh, on, on these leaks. Look, if these leaks were meaningless, um, fluff or not in the public interest and no one cared, no one would report on them and they would see Julian Assange as a crackpot and no one would pay any attention to it. The fact that they're being reported on inherently shows their worth. And I mean, as you had mentioned before, I mean, this shows, you had said that there was this unprecedented crackdown, it seems, uh, recently on whistleblowers in the U.S. Um, Assange being uh, still waiting to, on his asylum bid over in the Ecuadorian embassy. Mm -hmm. But um, it seems like he is still making an impact, um, even despite all, all, all this legal turmoil and all this pressure. Amazingly, yes. I mean, despite the fact that credit card companies have choked off financial support to WikiLeaks and that he is holed up in the embassy and basically can't leave and is waiting for Ecuador to make a decision. And despite grand jury or multiple grand juries being out on him, this organization is continuing to function, which is a testament to the strength of the truth and Assange's assertion that information wa wants to get out there and will. And it's a testament to um, the viability of WikiLeaks as an organization, especially at this time. Absolutely. And we're going to be keeping a close eye on the story, especially as more of these leaks continue to come out. Jeslyn, great to have you on the show as always. That was Thank Jeslyn you. Raddick, Director of the National Security and Human Rights and Government Accountability Project.